Um, but the, um, uh, as it said on the agenda, uh, I wanted to come out and do an update. You all sent a letter to me a couple of months ago, and I thought uh, time passed so quickly, but uh, I wanted to circle back on some of the issues that you raised. Uh, this is not intended to be a final thought. It's not intended to answer everything uh, that has been complained about or that I hear on a regular basis, uh, the more, uh, some of the more vocal folks, but I did want to give you an update uh, on the glider port. Uh, as some of you are probably well aware that the city real estate department uh, has not had its finest hour over many years on a lot of variety of issues. Um, and the good news that I can report is that a couple of months ago, the mayor hired a new real estate uh, director uh, and who is an individual that is outstanding. I'm very excited about her and she is gonna turn the corner on real estate assets. Uh, she has quickly gotten herself up to speed uh, she is very open, transparent, and quite candid when you talk with her, which is very refreshing. Uh, and that's how we solve problems and been where there has been challenges in the past and then how do we work together to solve them. Um, so some of the things that we have talked about is the glider port is certainly an unusual animal in the city's uh, list of assets uh, in the sense that it is an historic venue. Uh, and provides a unique opportunity for those who enjoy uh, a glider, uh, all aspects of what a glider port can, can offer. Uh, it is also well outside the capacity of the city of San Diego to operate it, uh, which is why they have looked to outside vendors, as uh, all of you, I think, know that many public lands uh, within the city are, in fact, leased out to private vendors. Um, where the city kind of got I think tripped up, and that's my personal opinion, is that the city got sued uh, because if you look at the glider port, there's quite a bit of activity there, and it is on our coastal bluffs, and issues of drainage and erosion become highly problematic uh, out there, and the city did get sued uh, to say you have to kind of clean up the act there, and uh, back in 2012, as we are today, the city doesn't have the money to do that. What the city did do, for some of you with longer memories, is uh, organize an advisory board uh, and created a what the city calls a general development plan, essentially a master plan, to do park improvements that would deal with drainage, make it friendlier to the public to be able to use, uh, reduce erosion, actually maybe even pave that parking lot, uh, which is quite the roller coaster if you if you ever use that your parking lot. Uh, and then once they got that, they had no money to do actually implement that. So uh, they shut down the advisory board because that's the job of an advisory board Don't. was to no. create the plan no. and then oversee no. the construction, but that no. wasn't gonna go anywhere. And so what the city decided was that they were going to issue an RFP to find a new vendor. And one of the conditions of the new vendor was to construct the park. 421, is that one right here? I can't talk to you right now. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, as you can imagine, a park of that size and scale up there is a multi-million dollar operation. And when the first RFP went out, Nobody said where they would be able to afford to build the park. So the city sat down, kind of scratched its head a little bit, and went out with a new RFP. The same result, no surprise. We, nobody could afford to build that park on the city's behalf. And so the city's kind of frankly been stuck. Uh, they let the lease continue month to month, uh, wondering what to do. Now, I've been in office for six months now. Uh, I talked with folks behind the, uh, uh, some of the more vocal folks, uh, and we know, we know they're, I, I know they're, they're at this meeting, uh, before I got elected, uh, I've met with them after I got elected, I've gotten their emails, which I read, uh, I hear their testimony at almost every city council meeting. And so what we're trying to do is figure out a new way to get past this requirement to build the park so that we can do an RFP and we can throw away the old lease and put together a new lease based on what we've learned over the years. And 
actually recoup revenue for the city, uh, has been widely reported. The old lease doesn't require anything because way back when, and I don't know how many years it's been now, um, the city just wanted somebody to operate that um, and try to operate that safely. So that's kind of where we're at. We're trying to look at what our options are up there. Uh, and as Mr. Kaczynski said, I agree, there is no need to build the park, but that's where the city's been stuck. And I'm getting it unstuck. And we have a new director, and we are going to get there um, with the new director and the new mayor. Uh, but as you know, I think most of you that have worked with the city, as I have over the many, many years, nothing happens very fast. But I have committed myself. It is uh, one of the top things on my whiteboard that I look at every morning to be able to navigate this and push the city to fix this. I want revenue out of that lighter point lease. I want it to be safe. And eventually, in my wildest dreams, we would actually um, improve the park so that we have the ADA uh, uh, access, that we have uh, protect the erosion. Uh, that we control the drainage, that we fix the parking lot. Um, and, um, but that's a long ways away. We got a lot of infrastructure problems, as all of you know. So um, the city will not reconvene the advisory board because the advisory board does not uh, intervene in between a private vendor and a leaseholder and the real estate assets. Advisory board advises park and rec, and there's no park there to really speak of. So um, that's uh, that's kind of where we're we're at. So um, from what I can tell um, at this time, I've made more progress on this than anybody uh, anybody else. So um, I wanted to be respectful of the town council taking the time to look at that. As a trivia, the park is actually in the university community plan. It's not in the La Jolla community plan. Is that relevant? I don't know. But when the advisory board was convened many years ago, no La Jolla was uh, invited to sit on that. Although we did get Ken King and Mary Coakley on there. Uh, I remember those conversations back in the day. Uh, but, um, uh, but that's kind of where we sit. I'm not happy with it. I've been briefed on it. Um, I don't need any more input because I know where we're at and what the problems are. Um, I will throw in, because I committed myself, as many of you heard, during the um, campaign, uh, is that I'm going to be rather blunt because um, I don't want to waste your time. If you think there is corruption, if you think there is um, um, something funny going on, there is a lot of mechanisms use. We have a city auditor uh, that has a hotline. We have grand juries. We have the, the district attorney. Don't call the council member. Don't call the police because that's not within our purview. Those organizations are. Um, if you think there's criminal activity, uh, don't go after our CRO. Uh, that's not his job. File a complaint. Uh, that's how you get the police involved. If you want a restraining order because you think you're being uh, attacked or threatened, um, there's, we have a legal system that deals with uh, restraining orders. Uh, the other thing that I will add is that uh, our city auditor um, is actually looking at city leases, uh, especially ones in terms of how we renew leases and how we hold over all of leases, which is clearly the case here, to say that um, we don't, that um, uh, because we not, have not done a very good job. We've let things languish. That's not good for the city. That's not good for taxpayers. So um, um, they're gonna be looking at that. I don't have a time frame for the city auditor when they're gonna do that audit. Uh, but if you've watched the city auditor, they do a pretty amazing job as an independent audit of our city operations. So, um, so, um, so that's, as I said, my intention was only to come by, give you an update, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that uh, uh, you might you might have, but uh, I think I'm making more progress on a, a number of issues uh, in District One that um, uh, the conversations have been poisoned somewhat, and um, I'm picking them up. And I don't dump it on my community rep to, to convey those messages. I I come out here. Uh, we've got a long way to go, but we're working on it, and. Uh, 
hope to get a resolution sooner rather than later. Uh, but I'll try to check in as we make uh, meaningful milestones. So I'll stop there, James, and uh, happy to take any questions uh, on this or anything else that you have an appetite for. Thank you, Council Member Lacava. I'm sure we have one, we probably have time for one question, and I'm anticipating at least one. So now's your chance. There is Bob. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Hello, Joe. Um, I have a couple of questions. First, um, as you know, um, I am personally not able to fly at the glider port because I testified in a court case against the glider port concessionaire. Are, are you aware of that? Yes, you've told me several times, yes. Have you looked into it to believe that it's true? Um, I have not. Um, I, I assert that what you're representing um, is true at the moment. Okay. And you also know that I'm not able to use the glider port because I have spoken to the city council about problems at the glider port. Um, you have relayed that you have not been able to use the glider port. I have also relayed that it's because I have spoken before the city council. In other words, I spoke to the city council showing problems at that glider port and those speeches that I made to the city council were used to expel me from an organization, a private organization that I must belong to in order to use our public land. Does that bother you? Uh, no, uh, it doesn't bother me because when we contract out with private vendors, which we do across our city uh, for the exclusive use of our public lands, um, that, that's something that we do on a regular basis throughout the city. We do have private vendors controlling public land uh, through a lease agreement. And, and you allow those public vendors to exclude people from using public land simply because they speak to the city council or testify in court? We allow the vendors, uh, you know, the, uh, we, we allow that if you think your civil rights have been violated, there are mechanisms to deal with that. Um, and I know you have chosen to focus your energies in reaching out to our office and, and you're free to do that. We'll, we'll, we'll read your emails. We'll, we'll listen to your testimony at city council, but it's not the most effective way to deal with that issue. But if that's how you want to proceed, that's, that's your choice. Would you, are you recommending a lawsuit be filed against the city? I think you should take the action that you deem appropriate, but I can tell you that contacting my office will not help resolve that conflict that you have with the vendor. Okay, so what, one more. This isn't a personal adjudication of the councilman yeah. to have to answer these questions. All right. He's here to answer questions yeah. about the yeah. This isn't a personal. I, uh, I agree. This is ridiculous. Thank you. Let's move on. I wanted to allow Bob to get... I agree also. Yeah, yeah I so think we need to move on. This is out of control. We are moving on. So the, the, I wanted to give Bob an opportunity to present a question. And so it does appear to be uh, more of a personal nature here. And, and whatever uh, path you uh, pursue is, is, is your choice. So, but at this point, we do have a packed agenda and we would like to move on. To follow up as uh, council member Latava indicated you can follow up in his office or consult the council. At this point though, we, we should move on. We, we do have listed the comments from the public. So again, this is open to people who have comments, if you have questions, this is your opportunity because we are moving on to the rec center construction with Trace Building. But before we do that, it's open. Now's your chance. Uh, James, I just want to thank you and the town council for the opportunity to kind of give you an update and I'll stay in touch and I, I appreciate the good work that uh, the town council does. So thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Thanks you very much. And thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you thank councilman. You. So, uh, again, thanks, council member LaCava, but now uh, we've moved on to the comments section. Do we have any comments, questions, concerns? I think we addressed a few of them. I will just mention at the outset that uh, the 
Ohio Town Council will not be meeting in July or August. We are taking a retreat in July. 